natural selection demand no. that we stand for no. like handicaps and no, there, you, no. There's a there. There's this argument that you hear sometimes that I, that I think you're getting on, and that is, well, if you believe in evolution, then you then you want to um, make sure the most, you know, fittest survive, and and, right. uh, and 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 that therefore this leads you down a path towards eliminating the undesirables from society, right? This is the right, sort right. of thing you're saying. Right. Well, the problem with that is. You, you're, there's a confusion here. This, this, no, no one's advocating this. The, the confusion is between is and ought, right? So evolution is about how the process happens, how it works, the survival of the fittest. By the way, humans are fit because we collaborate, we work together, and we build societies. That's, the why, that's why we're fit. Uh, right. It's not because we're, we're good at killing. So, so there's right. confusion between is and ought. So, so evolution is about what is and how we got there, and there's a, another question entirely of what ought we do? Given, given where we are, what ought we do going forward? What policies do we put in place? And no one's arguing for this, this sort of thing. Yeah. So okay. the, those are two very different things. The, it, the other thing is that atheism isn't in any way tied to evolution. There are plenty of theists who accept evolution as well. And yeah, Don's right, natural selection doesn't tell you anything at all about what one should do. And by the way, this idea of survival of the fittest that gets played up in these anti-evolution arguments that, well, we should, you know, uh, kill the, uh, the, the Down syndrome kids or the, the wheelchair bound uh, is nonsense. And that's, what that is doing is that is artificial selection where someone else is determining what their criteria for fitness is. Uh, and making pronouncements about what benefit somebody else is to society. And while that happens all the time, and it may be a fairly normal thing to do, it's not natural selection working at all. Okay. Good point. Good point. Okay, well, that's, that, that, that helps out a lot. Um, one note I just wanted to, to pass on to you guys, just coming from, from the inside perspective of Christianity, which I'm kind of um, getting out of, but you guys have mentioned a lot about how myths of the past how um, they all kind of are similar, and and like the flood, how there's different versions of it throughout different uh, cultures, how the originality. There, there of are a lot of themes, and and maybe part of that is because we have a lot of common fears, right? right. The flood myth, I think, is is about the fear of what happens if it doesn't ever stop raining. <laughs> you know, well, we yeah, don't know what yeah. this, where this rain stuff's coming from, wh what's turning it on and off, and what happens if it doesn't get turned off. You yeah. know, who's going to who's gonna pull the plug in the bathtub and drain it all out? But the, go ahead. Right. I'm sorry. I okay. interrupted. No, well, I just wanted to encourage you guys when you're in this debate that what I hear from Christianity is they almost use this as a plug for themselves because they say, well, of course it's all going to correspond. All the myths are going to correspond with each other because they all have a common root. Yeah, right. And, so, and, and likewise, so they've argued that Satan planted earlier messiahs on the planet um, in order to, to, to sow confusion for when the real one would show up. Right, yeah. So, so yeah, because they'll say, like, there's different cultures with different ideas of what the flood was like because they all experienced it. And so... Yeah, pretty um, much any rationalization you can imagine, you're going to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind so, of amusing, um, actually. <laughs> See what they'll come up with next. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for what you're doing, and you're really helping to destroy my faith. So. Okay, great. Woo! Woo! Thanks, Jason. <laughs> all right. I, I'm sure. I'm sure that all the people who think I'm working for the devil have just uh, make a note for this particular episode. Somebody called in to say that we're destroying. What, what is that title they gave you? Uh, the uh, his apostate decadency, the arch atheist of Austin. <laughs> He's living it up to it. I'm a bad mofo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We've got uh, Mike in Wild Forage. Hello, Mike. Hello. Are yeah, you you're on. I was just, I just simply wanted to ask what you guys' take was, like, through death, what do you think happens? You die. That's and it. And you don't think anything happens with your energy or something like that? It dissipates. I don't believe in... I don't believe in God or anything like that. I think that's ridiculous, but I just think your energy might go somewhere. I just don't know for, like, no one really knows. All of your parts go somewhere. 
Right, you start to decay, you know, you're warm, you start to cool off, the, the, the energy that, that kept you warm is now, now dissipating out, and uh, you start to decompose, and, you You know. become fertilizer. Yeah. You become fertilizer. Yeah. But, but it's not you. There's no, there's no indication that anything that makes me me uh, survives my death. The individual, individual components do. The atoms will, yeah. you know, go on to become parts of, you know, cars and flowers and whatever else in however much time. Uh, and the energy that's currently making my body work will dissipate along with that. But, you know, th so what, what makes me me is my brain. And yeah. we when already stops know working, that's all over. Uh, you know, while we don't really ever have to face this dilemma um, very often, yeah, there are extreme medical circumstances where somebody's brain essentially gets reset. Um, we're talking a complete loss of memories and a, and a complete change in personality. And from yeah. a legal standpoint, we consider them the same person. F from a more a philosophical standpoint, I'd say that they're not the same person. That you know, what makes me me are my likes, my dislikes, my preferences, my thoughts, my memories, my feelings. And if I suffer some kind of change to my nature, whether it's a, a massive damage to my brain or death, to which mm -hmm. those things that make me me are substantially changed or no longer existent, then I'm done. That's it. Yeah. The old, the old mask on. So uh, as a corollary to all this, we, you know, we believe that we have a very short time on this planet and we have to make good use of it. And, definitely, uh, definitely. Yeah. I agree 100%. All right, great. Thanks, Mike. All right, well, Appreciate thanks it. a lot for your time. Sure, Mike. We got Justin in, is it Towson or Tosin? It's Towson. Towson, how are you, Justin? I'm doing well, how about you? Pretty well. All right. Um, I actually had two questions. Um, the first question is, I know that the Earth, according to science, is approximately 0.5 billion years old, uh, maybe. Um, you're, you're fading in and out, so if you can kind of get to your point quickly, it, please If you've do. got, are you watching the stream? Point my, this. Us as scientists, the scientists of the world, uh, them not thing that there is to, uh, Justin, now, Justin, hang on. Hello. Justin? Yes, sir. There, there's something wrong with the phone. Have you got the stream on? Sorry. Uh, I'm so you're cutting in and out, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on because we can't understand a thing you're asking. Is that better? Well, we'll try. Go ahead. Start again. Okay. What, you know, the scientists, you know, it, understand. It's yeah. not any better, Justin. I'm sorry. You're, you're, you are you're. You sound like this. Um, then, and the science... And uh, the science, and uh, so we can't do that. So we try one more time. I'm sorry. One more time. Hello. Yeah, Hello. go ahead. Yes, scientists of today. I'm not knowing everything that there is to know about science yet, even though that they are working towards that. Who's to say that there is no God? Now, let me get you sure. I am on the fence with this up. Um, I'm facing, you know, I was born me some things that have made me doubt my faith, but on the other hand, who's to say that there is not, if we have not proved all the science? Okay, so if the question is, who can say with absolute certainty that there is no God, the answer is no one, and it doesn't matter a bit because that's not where the burden of proof is. If the question is, who can say that there is no God based on a preponderance of evidence, if we're talking about, for example, strong atheism, I can. Okay. Um, it's, it's not a position that I, I often present or often try to defend because I don't have any need to. What the, the limit is I do not believe a God exists, and that's as far as we have to go. Some people, like myself, take it a step further and would, would also believe that no gods exist. This isn't a position that I would assert with absolute certainty. I don't claim that it's proved. Um, I, mine is an entirely pragmatic argument that comes down to there, as I see it right now, there's two possibilities. Either there is a God or there isn't. If there isn't, okay, then I'm, I'm right. But if there is, what, what, do we, what can we say? Well, evidently, we don't know anything about this God. It doesn't intervene. It doesn't show us anything about itself. All the claims about gods are unsubstantiated. There's no confirmation of 
miracles or anything else. There's no more evidence for this God thing than there, than there are for fairies or leprechauns.